Good morning and welcome to the run-up. My name is Uchechuku Onodo. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. And I am Bayo Uluwake. It's nice to be here. It's another wonderful day and um, we're hoping that uh, what we have for you will be educative enough for you to learn something uh, to make your life a little bit better. I think we're starting off with um, something on what happened yesterday because it was something that the whole of Nigeria was talking about and we hope to have a guest in the house that will be answering some questions about what happened at Lake Tolgate and other venues of uh, Lagos and Nigeria at large. We also will be having a second guest that will be teaching us how to farm. <laughs> Mr. Bayo, I'm sure that you will have so much questions to ask him. Yes, being because, in that field before. because I'm actually thinking of um, doing some farming, okay. seriously. So uh, I'll be one of the beneficiaries of whatever he's sharing this morning. They say maybe in 50 years' time or in 30 years' time by 2050, Lagos might be submerged. It's a scary news, but <laughs> maybe... Uh, we'll be thinking about how to survive without land as well. True, which means um, find other means of growing food. Yeah. <laughs> and then also make young people like Uche to be a part of farming, the farmer's club. I'm like sorry. Why, why, why do you segment us? Why, why did you say young people like Uche? We're farmers too. Okay, well. We just don't do it your way. We have our really? way of doing things now. Like, yes. You need to up your game. <laughs> You find me on WhatsApp and Instagram and all that. Anyway, it's going to be an interesting one because the person who is coming is going to teach us how to farm in such a way that we won't be describing farming like as a, if you want to make money, you might have to make, get your hands dirty. Mm. Farming doesn't have to get your hands dirty any, uh, anymore. Well, but I think we are just going to uh, meet our first guest uh, this um, morning who will be talking on what happened yesterday in the answers and that is um bishop okoronko bishop okoronko good morning and welcome to the runner thank you very much okay let me just begin with the first question before my colleagues uh, uh, join in um you are a frontliner uh, when it comes to this agitation and especially when it comes to answers you were there uh, all that time, and you were also following the people yesterday. How was it yesterday? How would you describe yesterday's marking of this uh, uh, day in the history of Nigeria? It was largely successful. It was largely successful because uh, people turned up in the uh, front line that they thought out, like Pals, Roni. And the red, you know, happy and few of us have been and found out. We, we came up, we made our voices heard, and it, we even carried coffin. The, the people died on that 20th, and, the, 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 and uh, we were present at the top. We were there to record voice and to make known that. The incident of Lakey massacre was real. That the indictment of Shepard Fari, the government, the government, the federal government, was real. So we were there. We were there. And, uh, and uh, I can say, on the scale of 1 to 10, uh, we, we had we recorded as up as on our own because the level of intimidation of so for the night but I presume that nobody will even come out, but we came out. We know that uh, this really had to. I can say it was good for us. It was it was sucks. And the memorial we held thereafter at the Abila Event Center was also successful. At people coming, sharing the ice cream, we eulogized the dead and burned candles for them, remembered them in the way it should be. So there were videos uh, circulating online yesterday about uh, of uh, policemen dispersing the crowd uh, with uh, Tegas canisters and tanks of water. Uh, would you say that was before the, the success that she was saying was recorded or after? 
Okay, definitely. Uh, the police, you know, pouring water on, on us and using spray, tear gas. It has always been their norm. We do not allow that to interfere on our success by coming at in the sense that, you know, like you said, part of what the five, five demand was was a psychological evaluation of the on our police officers. It says that the police officers was there was no the rule of engagement. Yes. There was no the rules of engagement. So from, from our end, the police what they did was the atypical modus operandi that they've been doing, you know, right from time. So whether you know irrespective of their action, which is not normal, we recorded success yesterday. The memorial held, people told us, the media carried what happened. They were shooting tigers at us, they were shooting water canisters, they were spray, uh, flooding water on people, they were even uh, life ammunition and all, and all that. So that, that's police for you. That is, that is still part of our demand. That is still part of our demand that police should be reformed. Police should be reformed. Police change. Police be brought in a point that they will understand that protest, gathering, assembly is the inherent right of every citizen of every nation, both in worldwide charter and in the Nigerian constitution. We have the right. Is our right to come out and protest. Is our right to come out and make our voices heard. And if by adventure you need to maybe give some excuses that in the fight of we we were orderly. All you just needed to do was you stay this side, you keep traffic going, and traffic was going. But you know, they you know they always have uh, this level. And we had time. We had time, we said the position was going to be between. 8 and 11. They started shooting at 10. You didn't even wait. Okay, these guys have put time between 8 and 11. So after 11, you could have asked them, ah, your time said it at 11. No. Are you guys not okay to go? No, there was no pressure for that. They just wanted to show that we would not allow any voice to be heard. We push it down if you score whatever there is. So that, that, that's, that was what played out. But we recorded the success because we came out, we made our voices heard, we protested, we, we, we told us to, the way it is exactly. Okay, uh, I know that uh, Bayer will have uh, a perspective to add to that, but uh, let's finish with this guest first. Um, some people are concerned that the energy with which you, you marched in 2020, when the NSAS actually happened, died down. And okay, after two years, you went back to the Lekki toll gate and some other locations to do a memorial for the people that uh, allegedly lost or were allegedly lost to that struggle. And the worry is that that energy comes down. It's like you guys go to sleep after the march. Nothing else is being done. And a critical time is coming in 2023 where there will be election. The question is, how much of that energy are you willing to translate into uh, mobilization of the youths and every other person who is saying that uh, what is happening in Nigeria is not good enough for them, so that the election will have a massive turnout and wonderful voting? What are you doing about that? Or is it only rallies that we'll be having every October? Oh, oh, okay, okay. Like, first of all, I want you to appreciate the fact that some of us who were there on the ground knew that people died. We are not just only coming out to march on that 20th, but we are going to keep doing that every year until that day becomes a People die, and these people must be remembered. They must be remembered. People have been dying on the hands of police brutality from the inception of this country. And we must make it. And we must, we must make sure that that day is particular to us. We must make sure that that 20th, we don't play with sacrosanct. 
it mm -hmm. must be written in the annals of time that on 20th of October, such a thing happened. And all those who have been dying in the hands of police brutality should be remembered on that day. So, irrespective of whatever that is happening going forward, that day we must keep pushing. Just the same way you and I know that just recently, President Muhammad Buhari recognized June 12th as the official democracy day because people kept talking about June 12th so many years after it has happened. Now, coming back to the energy dying down on the youth, I don't think the energy have died down. If you look at what is happening politically, look at the new registrants we had, look at the new people that got PVCs, look at how many youth that went out there to register for INEC. That's to show you there's an awakening. The answers awakening the youth to understand that nothing will change except they begin to participate politically. That is why today you will notice that most rallies, you see young people at the front banner, irrespective of the party it is. So the youth are getting actively involved. The energy of the youth is not that it's going off. Now, but you know the issue of, like, for instance, I heard somebody analyzing that the crowd that came out was not as much. No, you don't expect the crowd to be as much as it was because we didn't want every whole uh, every whole youth to come out to look it okay. We just wanted to to make sure that we do the procession. You understand what I'm saying? We we're not. It wasn't like I said we had this mass mobilization agenda to get every youth out there. If we if we wanted, we would have had them, but that was not the goal. The goal was to make sure the memory of the dead is kept, and. Trust me, it will be it will be it will be child's play for any politician to think that the youth are not going to make it back to 2023. In fact, it will be any any politician or any any leader that doesn't know what the youth is coming with in this 2023 is wasting his time. It's going to be a tsunami. You know, a lot of them are overconfident, overtly overconfident, thinking it's going to be business as usual. Give them money and have your way, but. Trust me, it's going to be a bumper harvest of surprises for politicians in 2023. The youth are definitely going to make a statement. The youth are definitely going to take a stand. They are already taking a stand. We see them on social media every day. We see preferred pictures flooding wherever, you know, a, a personal ca candidate is going. And you see the number of youth who are thronging to him. So, trust me, the youth are ready to make him part in 2023. It's no longer business as usual. The energy of answers has produced a lot of consciousness and awareness among youth. As of yesterday, I was reliably informed that more than 2 million new registrants among the young population have picked up their PVC. So it's no longer that they registered and they are sleeping. They are picking their PVC. Before December, I can assure you, over 8 million people should have gotten their PVCs. Add that number to election of 2023. Add that number that these people are people that will come and vote. Remember, we always have low voter turnout in formal election, the number of people who register. But now, with the number of new registrants who are very eager to vote next year, you are sure that these people registering now, or these who just registered, are ready to vote. So there are people who are actually going to go to the pools. And while yes. NSAS is a political, some of us will be political, some of us will join, some of us will definitely make our stands known, and we will support a candidate at a point, because we are still talking to ourselves, we will support a candidate at a point, and we will put in all our, all our energy to make sure that that candidate wins, and that candidate will be candidate that will stop all the ills and that will reform everything we have been protesting for. That will make sure police is working, make sure they are paid well. You cannot give somebody an AK-47 and you don't pay the person well. Do you want the person to be an armed robber? We must make sure that po because police should also understand that what we are fighting at our end is just job for the young people, for them too. Look at our barracks. Look at the police welfare. Treat them well. Police officer, how many, how many persons but how many, how many Nigerians to one police? Recruit more police officers. Recruit more army. Recruit policing is is the is the, is the, is the bane of any peaceful society. You want your society to be peaceful. It must have good policing system. If there's no good policing system, the society is prone to evil. Is prone 
to youthful exuberance, is prone to danger, is prone to violence. In those days, when the population of Nigeria was commensurate with the number of policing they have, there was relative peace. You could see one police officer in a community with one with one button and he's controlling a lot of things because maybe it's just 500 people in the community or maybe 300 people and they are just three or four police officers and they are working with. But today you might have just one police officer to like 10,000 Nigerians or 5,000. I don't know the number exactly, but I know that Nigeria is highly under police. So part of our agitation is that, listen, we need a leader who can make sure that all our demands are answered. And the youth will definitely make a statement in 2023. I assure you that. Uh, and of course, the role that you have said young people are playing in the political mobilization that we see right now. There are those who feel that this energy should also translate into young people actually standing for political office, especially at the local government level. Seems to be that the focus in Nigeria is always uh, on governorship, presidential, um, national assembly, but that the local government is being neglected and that this energy that has been exhibited by young people and which you have alluded to can actually help uh, if young people would run for you know, positions, especially at the local government level, which directly impacts the population. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, uh, first of all, let me start that. You know, when your head is wrong, every part of your body will definitely be bad, will not be moving. When your head is not correct, your whole entire body, if you're having a migraine, even it will be impossible for your feet to move. It will be impossible to move your hand. It will be impossible for you to be able to do a lot of things. The problem of Nigeria is leadership at the top. So if we don't get leadership at the top correct, even the leadership at the bottom is going to be wrong. So we need to make sure that we get it right at the center with the right person who is going to decentralize the government, remove a lot of our focus and attention from the center and take it back to the grassroots. That is where you also see migration of young people going to the grassroots. If it's a young man that you say to go and start an election in the local government election, that is being written in the government house. Local government election, councillorship elections are written in government house by the governor. So what are you are telling a, you are telling a young chap like me who is a businessman that don't know the governor of my state or don't have a relationship with the governor of my state to go and run an election in my state for local government? How? When you know that the, the, the state electoral commission, the state electoral commission are being controlled by the governors. That is that is telling them that is that is impossible. So we need a center that is functioning, that will decentralize the entire system, make sure that the local government is functional and has autonomy, make sure that INEC is the one conducting the election at that level. That is where young people will go there to participate. If you are sending any young person to go to local government and start an election, you are sending him to, to, to oblivion. Because there's nothing we'll do at the end of the day. I know people who ran election in my state for local government level. They spent money. And the election day, even ballot didn't reach their polling, polling unit. <laughs> and results were, were announced. Winners emerged. Okay, uh, Bishop, um, there's so much we could talk about in, in this thing. Uh, a lot of people talk about rot in the system, and we, we're trying to correct that, hopefully, that uh, we as Nigerians, you know, we're trying to correct that. And we hope that, uh, we know that one of the first steps to take is to go to the polls and vote the right person. But there's more to talk about. Uh, on these issues, just that we cannot uh, use the entire day <laughs> to talk about justice. And at this point, we'd just like to thank you for being a part of the show and promise you that we'll be in touch to find out how the youths, who you control or who you are, you are a part of, are faring in all the uh, things that you're asking for, whether good governance, whether recognition of any kind, whether a better Nigeria, whatever it is, we'll keep in touch. Thank you so much for being a part of our show today. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate for thank you for having me. All right. You're welcome. Okay, uh, we'll take a short break. I won't return. I'm hoping that you're going to give us some kind of perspective. You know, he raised a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we'll talk briefly about that before we go on to the next guest. Let's take a short break now. We'll return in a moment. Welcome back. It is still the run up. Uh, we just had a conversation about uh, the mop up of everything that happened yesterday at uh, the remembrance, if I'm to use that word, of uh, two years remembrance of the NSAS protest that happened in October 2020. And we had Bishop having that conversation with us. But I want to bring it home into the studio. Mr. Bayo, you were going to give us a different perspective uh, to all that conversation. Yes, um, I think um, definitely it was good that the... Uh, that particular event was commemorated um, because it was something that attracted global attention. Um, and uh, okay, there are controversies, but the fact was that there was en there was NSAS. There was NSAS protest. Uh, the young, largely young people were making demands. Those demands cut across a number of things uh, beyond just uh, disbanding the special anti-robbery squad. Uh, SARS, to also include um, providing for the police, uh, ensuring that um, the welfare, you know, uh, accommodation, uh, salaries and things like that were, were improved upon and more police officers were recruited. But like as Yamgul said in the conversation, you know, with uh, Bishop, um, some people were expecting that this energy that was you know, uh, that propelled the NSAS uh, movement will translate into politics. In other words, that the young people would not just sit back mm -hmm. and, and rest on their oars, but would actually now become active players on the political space. Uh, and I agree with him. I think, yes, in truth, we are beginning to see that, you know. But there are also those who feel that, uh, and that's why I ask a question as to whether uh, Bishop didn't think that young people should get into politics uh, at begin from a level, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you find these days, uh, some people believe that when, when, when not just young people, but when any Nigerian would like to run for public office, they just focus on governorship, they focus on the National Assembly. And these are, these are very you know, good aspirations. But the fact also remains that the bulk of our people stay in the local government areas, mm. you know, and those who are making this um, proposal believe that at the local government level, if, you, if young people were running for office, they are already known there because they mm. live there, you know, their parents are there, their friends are there, uh, and so on, they are not going to spend much money to campaign because they are already known. They are not contesting statewide. Um, it's easier to identify them and it's also easier to hold somebody you know accountable if he or she promises to do something. Uh, as against what we have today where you don't even know most of these people who run for local government positions, mm. talk less of trying to hold them accountable. So this is one school of thought, you know, and, and that's why I wanted to see what his reaction to that was going to be. And I, I agreed with him, you know, when, to some of the things he said in response to that. But I think those who make this argument have a strong point because the local government actually has tremendous influence. Uh, it's just that we seem to have pushed this aside. I mean, primary school education, primary health care, you know, there is a, a myriad of licensing fees, your radio and television licensing fees, vehicle plate, license plate fees, vehicle license, it's a, all of these accrue to the local government. You know, and if young people who were beginning to ask that the political elites be held accountable find themselves at that level of governance, they might be able to actually begin to make significant changes. You know, and then from there, they build up experience that will see them being propelled over the years to becoming members of the House of Reps and so on. When you, when, for example, some political leaders in other countries, when they say, oh, this person is 40 years old and is prime minister, you hear a lot of people saying, oh, very young, but in Nigeria it's not possible. They forget that this guy who is a 40-year-old prime minister, if you take the case of Tony Blair, 
when he became Prime Minister of the UK, he was in his very early 40s, right? But Tony Blair started politics at the age of 18. He was a councillor at the age of 18, right? So, but people forget that. They just see, oh, he's 40 years. So he's, uh, he's very young. But he started, he has 22 years experience before becoming Prime Minister. So those who make this argument, you know, cite such examples. Uh, and, and, and I feel it's something that... But, but uh, let, let me come in there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if, if a Nigerian would be wrong to make that kind of argument. Because in the first place, yeah. before you become someone that will be known in Nigeria, uh, Tony Blair had the opportunities that he could have. Mm -hmm. In Nigeria, I don't know if at 18 you will even be close to uh, the polling unit uh, before you talk of going to buy a farm. To... A lot of things have been done in such a way that it is out of the reach of the young mm -hmm. uh, and the, the ones uh, lower on the ladder yeah. and all that. So yeah. exactly. can, can we really... Or with all fairness compared you know, to what is I, I was going to here. say that I, I feel like an embargo has been placed on mm -hmm. politics in Nigeria. For, for example, um, you mentioned how Tony Blair started of politics at 18. I mean, an average 18-year-old in Nigeria is probably struggling with jam, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get into the university, no matter how brilliant he is. When he passes jam, he probably doesn't get the course of study he really wants. Mm -hmm. He probably has to deal with whatever the university pushes on him. And then that, it, it begins from there. Some years ago, we had the Not Too Young to Run bill yes. passed. Uh, we were all excited about it. But when you begin to look at the nitty gritties, the things that make up that bill and what an individual, a young person, needs to have before he or she can be able to actually... Um, fully harness all the things engulfed inside that bill. You, yeah. you find out that a lot of people, there are just lots of challenges in front. Talk about the finances. I, I know quite viable young men who are in their local government areas and young women, and young women mm -hmm. doing great stuff. I yeah. mean, paying people's school fees, enabling uh, market women with businesses and all that. But the moment you ask them, guy, people love you. And you're well known in this community. Come and run for councillorship. Mm -hmm. He would say no. Why? Because Bishop mentioned something when he was speaking. He said, how do you expect a young man like him, who is just doing business, to go home and run for office when he does not have a relationship? With the governor. That relationship, <laughs> that word relationship is very important. Because the governor could sit in his office one day and say, I've been watching this person. Mm -hmm. He, I just like him. Call him to my office. And they call him, and that person automatically becomes counselor. Nobody knows him. He probably just came back from the US and probably threw a big party in the village and his name mm -hmm. is ringing everywhere and they make him counselor. You're right. I mean, these are, these are yeah, I, I just, just, just I just got a message now of someone saying, can anything like that just work in Nigeria where um, even when you graduate from school, you are going to look for a job and they're asking you to have 10 years experience <laughs> and you have to be 18 years and that's what just got the, now. Yeah, so let, let me, our let, situation let me, in Nigeria is really this, terrible. This, 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 I mean, nobody can dispute this. You see, but the truth is this. When you want to change a system, you don't fold your hands and stay at home, okay? Um, and yes, there are a lot of impediments, you know, in front of those who wish to aspire to political office. But there are so many political parties, don't forget. And not all the political parties are asking you to bring a hundred million for governorship. This doesn't invalidate the points you've made, okay? I'm just highlighting the fact that there are options and there are ways. And the constitution doesn't say you have to be a graduate. To con if I had to be president of Nigeria, you don't even need a school. degree. You don't need a degree. You know, but still, because we are educationally conscious, I understand that people who first want to finish their education, you know, get properly prepared. So yes, that is a fact, and they may not even be thinking. No, of, but, but another of issue that. is yeah. that there is no system such that you can be whether in office mm -hmm. or uh, be employed and then you continue learning. It used to happen yeah, it in used to those happen. days. Yeah. You get there, you are trained on the job and yeah. all that. Even now, you do vacation jobs. Yeah, yeah now everybody no wants you to be ready-made. And then when you come, you have so much experience that <laughs> <laughs> will be wondering when you were born. 
That's, those are the challenges, some of those challenges. And the people, the annoying thing is that some of the people who say these things are those that had the opportunity in their days. Mm -hmm. Some went to school for free. Some mm -hmm. went to school, you know, when they were practically begging them to go to school. And now yeah. they come and make schooling or having a job or mm -hmm. even aspiring for office so cumbersome that you cannot even do it. Yeah. And that's why for me, I'm actually excited, you know, that we see young people speaking up. We see young people mobilizing. We see, it's because this wasn't happening before, you know, and... Um, Would you really say that Buhari became a head of head state? Head of state he was at young. 33. Uh, Gowan was young. Uh, revolution in Nigeria and everywhere else <laughs> has already always been in the hands of the young. young. Mm -hmm. But maybe not civilian young, I don't know. But how old was Zeke when they were struggling for uh, independence? They were young as well. Uh, yeah, so they were young. It's always young. They were, they were young, you know, and... Um, you also find that um, I think political parties are supposed to identify. You see, the, the, the whole essence of developing leadership mm. forms a core part of what political parties are supposed to do. Succession plan. Yes, you know, to, 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 to attract, to gain, and to mold the next leaders. And this is also part of what we are not seeing happening. Rather, what we see happening, which, which has been well discussed, is somebody who is well connected saying, okay, I know this person. Even if it's a young person they are picking, it's because they know that person. Mm -hmm. You know, we've even seen situations where people even put their family members all through into the political space, you know. So, but now that people are conscious, especially young people, you know, we are beginning, for me, we are beginning to see them uh, walking the talk. And we shouldn't forget that for a population of 206 million, at least 150 million Nigerians are below the age of 30. There's absolutely no dispute about that, right? At least 150 million are below the age of 30. And it's absolutely important that whatever they say, whatever the orientation is, mm. no matter how they feel, all this should be acknowledged, mm -hmm. you know, if we are going to have peace in the country. Because the, we, we see a very big interest. Before, we used to say they were not interested. Now, we see a lot of interest. And the political parties that are supposed to build leadership, groom leadership, should begin to now you know, provide a platform for these young people, even in their own enlightened self-interest. Because otherwise, those political parties would die if young mm -hmm. people, yeah, exactly, serious, if, yeah. they, if, they, if they don't get in there. Because exactly. the old people will leave anyway. And if you don't have young people replacing them, you know. But I feel that those who make this argument have a point. You know, young people should also begin to test the system, get into the political space. Find political parties that won't ask you to bring 50 million to be governor. And, and I want to agree with you on what you said about political parties creating this space. Because you see political parties tell you that this is the head of the youth department or our youth leader. And you're looking, and at, a, and you're looking at a 60-year-old or a 55-year-old. Yeah. And I'm wondering, uh, what? Are, how uh, are terrible. you able to permeate through the, the systems of the young people? You don't even know how to load your charge card on your phone mm -hmm. and you are the youth leader. You understand? So I feel like political parties also have a role to play. I mean... Before now, the conversation used to be how that young persons are not interested in politics and yeah. leadership. Okay, now we're showing interest, but the political parties keep stepping on our head. Uh, uh, political office holders are way older. People leading the political parties are way older. People calling the shots are way older. And it's more like we're just trying to see if they can listen you just we keep making suggestions mm -hmm. instead of being able to make actual changes and call shots and until they are able to get young people to that point where we know that we can confidently say stuff and it happens a lot of young people are going to keep stepping back like i said earlier i know young men and women doing great stuff but the moment you want to like bring politics into it they step back people still see it as a dirty game mm -hmm. people still see it as something very dangerous my, mm. I'm still important to my mother. I don't want to <laughs> go and join, you know. People yeah. say stuff like that. Yeah, so I think that there is a lot of um, progress that has been made. Uh, kudos to my generation. Thank you so much for everybody that stepped out yesterday to commemorate the two years anniversary of the NSAS. 
we're doing great stuff, but there is still a lot of work let to me, be let, done. Let me, just, let me just reinforce what you just said. You see, the most interesting thing is that young people, first of all, took control of certain sectors of the economy mm. to demonstrate what they can do. Yeah. You take the entertainment industry, you take how the, 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 the movie industry was built. It was young people who built it. You look at entertainment, it was young people who built it, right? Mm. And then they have now finally gravitated or are gravitating to politics, yeah. right? Because this is where the policies are made. So if you are a musician, if you are, if you are an actor, if you are an inventor, if you are a coding expert, right? Policies that will govern what you do is going to be made by people who probably don't even understand what you're doing. Okay. And this is why now it's interesting that... that okay, uh, well, uh, we just hope that um, youths are leaders of tomorrow, that tomorrow will come. And someone whose uh, tomorrow has already come and gone should not say, it's my turn. I'm not saying this because of a particular person, but it's a general feeling that is in, especially the political class now, mm. the older you get, the more entitled you feel that you should remain in that space. But we'll take a short break now, and we'll be joined by our next guest to be talking farming to us. Stay with us. <laughs> 